Sunday, January 8, 2012. This is Mercedes Diesel Guy, and this is part two of my uh, Dehan Classic 3 folding bike rebuild. As you can see, yesterday I got the bike almost all the way stripped down. Still a few more pieces of hardware. Uh, you know, the um, you know, the brakes have to come off. The uh, This... Um, this uh, little wheel assembly here has got to come off. Got to get the rest of the seat post apart and separate the uh, two portions of the frame, not to mention get the rest of the hardware off the uh, fork there and the handlebar. Uh, as you know, one of the um, difficulties I've had here was that um, the hinge pin, which goes through this portion of the frame, uh, was causing the frame to wiggle and uh, I don't believe the bike is uh, safe or really rideable like that and from what I hear that's a reasonably uh, common problem with these old Dehans here um, and I figured that uh, what really happens is that uh, because this uh, this portion of the frame here is you know relatively speaking pretty thin I mean it's uh, uh, It's hard to say, maybe uh, a sixteenth of an inch uh, thick, and you know, over time with lots of riding, especially with things not adjusted properly, uh, these holes here for the uh, hinge pin get out of round, and that's what's causing the wobbling. So, uh, in order to at least attempt to repair that, I got this. Now, this is a. Uh, this here is a steel rod, which I got at Home Depot, and it should be roughly the same diameter as the hinge pin. I mean, I have to, I mean, it's off by maybe a hundredth. Couldn't quite get the hinge pin in, but it was really close. So I'm gonna basically, um, uh, I'm gonna slice off enough of the tube there uh, to fit to fit inside this gap gonna drill it out a bit and then what I'm probably gonna do is weld it in place and uh, my theory is that once this is in uh, it should uh, compensate for the out of roundness of the uh, of the holes here in the frame and you know, because the whole tube here will encase the hinge pin uh, it really shouldn't go bad again so that's the theory I'm working with. Uh, that's mostly what I'm going to be doing today once I get the rest of the frame uh, uh, stripped down. And uh, hopefully then I can also uh, start prepping the frame for paint. And I'll show you what I got here. I'm just going to be rattle canning it. But I did pick out my color. I'm going to go with this uh, with this Rust-Oleum Blue right here. Uh, this is actually called Sail Blue, but uh, it's kind of a nice candy blue, and I think it'll uh, look good on the bike. I uh, wanted something that would stand out a little bit, certainly more than this uh, dull old uh, gray silver. I mean, this is just, as much as I like uh, the color silver, this is, it's all dull, it's really not pleasing to the eye at all. Um, and I considered red and perhaps the hunter green, but I didn't really like the shade of the hunter green they had, so decided to go with the blue. And it should look good once the bike is done. So uh, today I'm gonna try to get this uh, uh, this portion of the frame shored up, and you know, get the rest of the frame stripped down, and then uh, get it prepped for paint. Okay. Well, I've been working for a while in the garage with my uh, tools, and you can see right here I have uh, made the new guide tube slash bushing, which um, goes straight through the frame here. Right now I just kind of have it pressed in, but I may actually weld it in. Um, the, the pin, which you see is all dirty here from... Uh, uh, from repeated fittings uh, actually fits through this tube very tightly. Um, 
so I don't think this will ever wear out. I'm still debating whether or not I should uh, weld it in place. I'm actually not even sure if I need to do that, and as such, uh, if I don't need to, maybe I don't even want to. Um, can always redo that at a later time, but uh, right now I'm going to try to uh, uh, tap this uh, guide pin through the hole here and try for a uh, try to see how uh, the frame reacts. Now, as you can see here, this new guide tube does not interfere with the frame closing at all. I was uh, a little worried that it might uh, interfere with the pin on the other side, but it doesn't. So this uh, hopefully should be a uh, solid repair and something perhaps that other Dehan owners uh, can use to restore their frames. And I think this is actually going to be a very permanent repair. As I said, the, I think the reason why the, um, why the holes here on the top and the bottom got out of round is because the, the uh, guide pin was only holding in, uh, in you know, this much sheet metal here, this thickness, uh, which over time just got, uh, um, just got out of round. But with this tube here, I don't think, uh, you know, assuming everything's properly greased, I don't think this can ever get out of round. So. I think I have confidence in this repair. Just want to see if I can get this all together and see how the frame reacts uh, when everything's locked together. Well, I have it all together here for a test fit, and I'm very happy to say that um, frame wobble is 100% gone, down to zero. Uh, so my idea here with the guide tube uh, for the locking pin uh, worked rather well. You can see the uh, frame now unlocks pretty easy. I've got the pin adjusted and and this locks into place and solid as a rock. So um, this is definitely repaired which means we're going to go and continue stripping down the frame now uh, with an eye to repaint it today. And I'm actually not going to weld the um, guide tube in place. I really don't think uh, it needs to be done. So. I can always change my mind about that in the future, so uh, I'm going to pronounce this repaired. And uh, any other wobble, wobble I had, like in the crank and in the headset there, um, that's just a matter of uh, adjustment. So uh, if anybody else has an old Dehan with uh, a faulty hinge, uh, this is what you can do to repair it. And obviously, you know, I'll. Uh, uh, have to see it in action to see uh, how well this works uh, while I'm riding the bike, but I am pretty confident in this. Okay, as you can see, I have the frame stripped down. There's the uh, handlebar tube, the fork, front piece of the frame, and rear piece. The only stuff I've left on are the uh, bearing races. So, I'm really just going to mask those off when I paint. But uh, right now I need to uh, run over to the auto parts store and just get some degreaser. But uh, hopefully uh, it's still kind of warm today. I can get this uh, frame into paint today and then continue uh, the rest of the job next weekend. Okay, um, I have the frame completely stripped down now and uh, I actually took a uh, wire brush attachment with my uh, angle grinder and uh, took all the surface rust off the frame so I just sprayed a little rust encapsulator I didn't have too much left um, around some of the original problem areas and everything's hanging now and I'm gonna prime it Okay, I just wanted to take one final video of the day. This is it for part two of this series. I um, just wanted to show you that I, that I got the frame painted. Um, it's starting to get much colder outside and I lost light. As you can see, it's um, dark out there now. I was painting by uh, garage light. But you can see that I've uh, got this really nice shade of blue on here now. So, frame... Uh, is obviously going to hang down here in the basement. It's nice and warm and dry, and um, paint can cure down here. I've definitely got some runs in the paint, so I may or may not actually uh, just do a little wet sanding uh, before I reassemble the bike. 
Um, probably just going to leave it as is. It's really not too bad. Uh, I think I actually picked out a really nice color for the bike. Uh, it's an 80s bike and uh, it's really kind of seems like an 80s sort of blue to me. So this of course is the rear section of the frame and give me a moment here I'll walk around and show you the other parts. This is the front section of the frame. And over here is the uh, is the handlebar tube. And let's see if I can get into the light here to better show you the color. I've got the fork hanging right here. And as I said, it's a really nice shade of blue. Um, usually with these cans of Rust-Oleum, it's just uh, uh, you know you can see the color on the cap, but it's really hard to tell exactly what you're dealing with until you have it. Uh, until you have the paint laid down, and I'm very happy with the color, so uh, hopefully next week I can get into uh, reassembling the bike for you.